Hey everyone, it is, uh, it's SigRev2, back again with another video for you all. Holy shit, it has been a while, now hasn't it? I've got OBS set up and I'm using my webcam, I've got my uh, trusty microphone here, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I'm gonna try to do as little editing as I can here. But, I was at work earlier today and I saw this lovely, lovely lovely ranking here posted on my on my phone they give me a little notification i don't normally go to alt press or very many music web zines uh so i don't know <laughs> uh can you tell it's been a while i'm not really in the groove uh i'm, I'm kind of operating on the fly here so if things cut out and whatnot, just uh, just know that uh, that I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, so yes, this Green Day song by song ranking of studio album tracks from Sir Scott Waldman. Scott, thank you for making this list. Um, I figured I would just go through it and check out and see what's what it's got in store. Uh, for those of you that might not know, I'm a pretty big Green Day fan. For the most part, you know, I, I love the vast majority of the things that they've put out. So I'm interested to see where where they got things ranked. Now, I accidentally spoiled the absolute bottom for myself while trying to set this up. And needless to say, I'm not too thrilled with their um with their bottom pick. But let's scroll down for a little bit. Uh, Green Day have been around since 1987 and been huge since 1994, and that's not an understatement or exaggeration. Since the band just put out their 13th studio release last month, uh, Father of All Motherfuckers, for those that are watching in the future. Uh, we found it fitting to rank all 170 album tracks with Green Day superfan Tom Kunzman of the band 18th and Addison. You're welcome. Uh, I've never heard of 18th and Addison, uh, hopefully... If this list doesn't prove to be too bad, I might have to check out their band. Uh, you know, maybe see if uh, they uh, know what they're doing. A uh, few self-imposed rules before you read further. There are no bonus tracks, b-sides, singles from greatest hits albums. And Maria would have been in top ten. I don't know about that. Reissued album tracks, demos, or covers on this comprehensive list. No opinions are wrong, but we know that ours is. Well, uh, so yeah, like I said... Rest is at the absolute bottom of this list, and I don't agree with that at all. I think it's actually one of the strongest songs on 39 Smooth. There's just something about it. It's very, very, very atmospheric, very moving about it. And, I mean, yeah, you could say it's just another stoner anthem, but I, I think it's a pretty strong showing, especially for their very first album and some of their first recordings that they've done. Are you kidding me? The fact that they could do something this atmospheric and textural, let's go with that word, so early on in their career, it's it's mind-blowing. Now, that's not to say it's like going to Pasolacqua levels of great, but it's certainly in probably my top three for 39 Smooth. Uh, 1039 Smooth Out, Slappy Hours, top five easily, but... Mm. This, but this isn't my ranking. This is this is a ranking from uh, um, uh, Tom Kunzman of 18th and Addison. So he doesn't like rest too much. Let's give this list a rest before we start. We're starting our article uh, with the ninth track, 39 Smooth Hello, Is, is This Goodbye? Uh, 169 Nightlife. Uh, yeah, that belongs really low on the count, I would have to say. Um, fuck, it... I would, yeah, I would probably say it's my least favorite Green Day track, and that's just studio releases. Excuse me. We're, we're doing this live. We're doing this live. Uh, our second entry is the first song mentioned from Dose, and it features Lady Cobra, who gets her own song named after her a few mentions later. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Nightlife is one of those songs where if you haven't heard it, I wouldn't say go listen to it, but it's really something that, <laughs> it's to be 
a scene to be believed, I guess. Kill the DJ at 168, really? Huh. Uh, Green Day get violent in a saccharine way on the first song mentioned from Uno. The grand fan... Wow. The Franz Ferdinand-esque music may seem like a departure to some, but it's not a surprise. As Green Day experiment with different sounds and genres on most of their out. Oh, I accidentally... Oh, all right. Well, now we know what 167 is. Uh, Kill the DJ would be much higher on my list. Uh, mm, I don't know. I I'm starting to be a little bit... Con I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that this list is going to be like, oh, well... If it's not just straight up pop punk, then it's going to the absolute bottom. And with while that's loud, you know, yeah, with with while that's loud and junkies on a high, as you can clearly see from the bottom, I didn't plan this out. I'm not Anthony Fantano. All right, I don't know how to do this OBS shit. I barely know how to do work the internet. I barely know how to use my laptop. But yeah, um, it seems as though this is one of those. If it's not pop punk, fast. Fast Fury, then it's, it's not going to be ranked highly, and I don't know if I agree with that. A longer song on Dose makes us sick with pleasure in our minds. The band don't often start all in. Give us what a cheap trick. I don't know where I would put that in my ranking, honestly. I don't hate it, but I'm not a big fan of it. It's there. That's, that's the vast majority of what I can say on songs from the trilogy. They're there. They exist. Yeah, Junkies on the High... Probably one of my least favorite songs from them. It would be absolute, like, bottom five. That song is so fucking boring. Uh, 16? Really? Hmm. I would have that significantly higher on. But, okay. Lady Cobra, yeah, Lady Cobra is fucking trash. Like, I get that they're trying to pay respects to this Lady Cobra woman. Uh, I know next to nothing about the situation or who Lady Cobra really is. I know that she's a part of a band that Billy Joe really likes. You know, kudos on him on getting a collaborative effort going on. But I don't know, man. I don't know. Song, definitely bottom tier. Amanda. Ugh, that's... That is not good. Amanda. That low? Really? Fuck. Oh, man. No. Uh, I, Amanda's definitely one of the higher moments on Trey. That's not even a question. 163? No way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's down. That's all the way down. Like, e with or without the Gary Glitter interpolation, or, yeah, whatever. Like, I wasn't a big fan of Father of All Motherfuckers. There are some jams on it, but oh yeah, and Junkies on a High are not. They're, they're not them. They're not jams. The Judge's Daughter. Really? Fuck me. Okay, yeah, that I completely disagree with. I, I think they're just going to throw a lot of the band's earlier material at the absolute bottom, and I'm not. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I think 39 smooth, or at least 1,039 smooth out, slappy hours. I mean, they did say it's just the album, so I don't know if they're going to include the EP shit that was included on that compilation. But, I mean, Judge's Daughter's so low, that's a jam and a half. I don't know, man. Ashley, yeah, Ashley would be bottom five, easily. Like, even the Demolicious version, which I prefer significantly to the album version it's still not worth listening to in any capacity road to acceptance at 159 fuck man <laughs> this list is doing me dirty right now i get it like it's gonna have the early shit like there hasn't even been a song from kerplunk yet and i prefer 39 smooth to kerplunk even though i love both albums i don't know man I don't know. Walk away? Really? I don't want to share no more story. Nah. Walk away. It's another great song from Trey. That low? No. I mean, I, I mean, I guess I should think about it realistically. Yeah, I might like these songs, but we're also so far only with the trilogy, the first album, and two songs from Father of All Motherfuckers. 
And I gotta think realistically, because with the songs that I love, I would rank them extraordinarily high. So, I, I get it, I get it to an extent. There's not a whole lot on the trilogy that would rank very highly, but I don't know, man. I have a feeling that X Kid is gonna be very high up on that list, and uh, I don't know, man. Dirty Ron Bastards. This one was I wasn't a big fan of this. Excuse me, that's disgusting. Demonetized. I don't even make money on YouTube. Yeah, Dirty Rotten Bastards, I've never been a big fan of it. It feels like they're trying to do another Jesus of Suburbia thing, and it, it doesn't flow well. There's certain bits and pieces of it that would work perfectly fine as normal songs, but I don't know. You're you, They're already going at 37 songs with the trilogy, and there's a few other songs that we know were being worked on. So, I don't know. It's like, why wouldn't you just go full hog? Why, why skimp out now? Fuck time, yeah. That one easily... That one should be a lot lower. That one... Like, it was a Foxboro Hot Tub song, for fuck's sake. Like, it's not a Green Day song. It shouldn't be on a Green Day album. It's simple. <laughs> Fast forward the track to 1 minute 11 second point. If you ever want to hear what Billy sounds like after drinking a sip of Coca-Cola straight from the bottle. Alright, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Because it's just in the middle. What is it? Like, it's around the solo point, but he's just, like, breathing into the mic. And I guess he's trying to sound like he's fucking someone. Like, he's like, <sighs> and it's like, are you sure you're just not enjoying a tasty beverage? This video is not sponsored by Monster Juice, by the way. It should be. It should be. Maybe when I get this thing, uh, when I get it rolling. A little boy named Train. Uh, it was, it, it's a cute little song. I wouldn't rank it very highly. I'm kind of surprised that, um, uh, uh, Drama Queen hasn't been listed so far. Because I know a lot of people weren't a big fan of that song. I think it's really cute. Lazy Bones at 154? What the fuck? No way! Even with Dose not being one of their best albums, Lazy Bones is one of the best fucking things from that entire project. Are you shitting me? Really? Okay. I was a teenage teenager. That would be a lot lower. That's fucking boring. It's a, so boring and dumb, by the numbers, milk toast bullshit. Like, g give me a break. Self-titled, yeah. Sweet children, fuck you. Disappearing Boy, I'd probably have it a little bit higher. Stop When the Red Lights Flash. It's a fun song. It's a very fun song. Uh, I don't know. I think having it... I, I would have it a little bit higher. Rusty James, yeah. Don't Leave Me. Yeah, that one's not a big favorite. Uh, not one of my favorites on that album. Wild One So Low, though? Wild One So Low, though? Really? Fuck that, dude. Wild One is probably my favorite song on Dose, actually. That and Lazy Bones. Fuck that, man. See you tonight. The intro track! Rated... <laughs> the intro track to Dose rated higher than two the two best songs on that album? What? Nah. Angel Blue, one of the most... The, one of the biggest fucking filler tracks on Uno. Fell for you? I'd have that a little bit higher. But yeah, I can understand that. Graffitia? Hmm. No. No, no, no. Graffiti is one of my favorite songs on that album. But that and... Um, Meet Me on the Roof. Those are like the only two good songs on that album. My leg's starting to hurt. I don't know what's going on. 80? Fuck. Okay, no. No, we're, we're, we are having... We are about to throw fists, good sir. Babs Uvula who? Are, are you just... You you made this list to disappoint me, didn't you? Babs Uvula who? Insomniac is probably my favorite Green Day album. That and American Idiot, they they toe the line. I fucking love both of them. And Babs Uvula who is one of the most underrated songs from the group. So, God. Seeing it so low. And, like, it's... In 80 and Babs Uvula, who, like, God, I, I don't know. 
Missing you, yeah. Words I might have ate? Yeah, I, I wouldn't rank it too highly, but fuck. It just feels like these are too low. Like, I get it. It's ob When you're ranking the whole, obviously there's going to be a bottom and a top, but I, I hate these rankings because it feels like th that they're on the bottom, that they're automatically being called bad, which I, I know it's not exactly the case, but it still hurts me something fierce. Say goodbye. Yeah, not one of my favorites from Revolution Radio. I would rank that significantly lower. For some weird reason, I figured I'll bring this up. They played this song on my work radio. Let that sink in. Of all the Green Day songs, I've heard them play 8th Avenue Serenade. I've heard them play... They play Oh Love all the goddamn time. I've heard another song from the trilogy. I don't remember what. But then they play this. <clears throat> Okay. Troublemaker, that would be so much lower. That would be near the bottom of my list. That's such a fucking... I don't like using the term, but it's so fucking cringy. It's so... Uh, those lyrics, they're not good. Yeah, there's Drama Queen. I would have it significantly... I take back? No way. Take back's fucking badass. Come on. Come on. That would be top 100 at least. Sweet 16, that one... I, I have a soft spot in my heart for this one. It would be... I don't want to say, like, top 30. Because, realistically, compared to most other Green Day songs, it's it's by the numbers, simple pop, rock, nonsense. But I don't know. It, it has a special place in my heart. Android, I have real no... I don't really have any feelings for that one. Platypus, I hate you so low. That's that one's like fucking almost top fifty, man. Like, how can you not love it when they get raw and aggressive? Like, uh, all right, whatever. No pride, boy. If you don't give me a fucking break, oh my god, nope. This list is hurting me a little bit. No Pride, probably one of the best songs on Insomniac. 131. Out of 170. Out of 170, mind you. 131. We have not even cracked the top 100 yet. I, I can already tell the top of this list is going to be like the big songs. You know, like Basket Case and... And American Idiot and Boulevard of Broken Dreams and shit like that. I already have a feeling. I have a, I have a pit in my stomach that's telling me this. I don't know how the pit is telling me. I don't care. I was trying to be funny. But no, I'm, I'm too... <laughs> I'm stressing out too much on no pride being so fucking low. 8th Avenue Serenade. Yeah, it's pretty boring. Know Your Enemy. That... I don't hate it. But it's really simplistic. And I get it. Oh, well, pop punk, it's not supposed to be that. that blah, 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 blah. I get it, but I mean, fuck. It's like two chords of a song. Like, fuck. Take the Money and Crawl. That was one of the, another one of those troublemaker cringy songs. Troubled Times, that would be so much lower. Sugar Youth, I don't even remember Sugar Youth. Holy shit. I listened to that album, like, not too long ago, too, and I'm... I'm on the, it, that's the one that's like... If it's that song, then yeah, it's it's okay. It's pretty cute. Carpe Diem. I, I wasn't a big fan of that one. On Uno. There's so many better songs on that. I was there. Fuck off. Fuck off, dude. Oh, well, it wasn't written by Billy, so it's automatically trash. <laughs> You're a fucking cunt. Westbound sign? Fuck. At this point, I'm not even reading. The, like, I'm not really catching the comments at the bottom. I'm just looking at this because we're already at 20 minutes, and we haven't even cracked the top 100. This video might be a while. Read more. No. Reject? Fuck you. No one knows? Bruh! Fuck off! Panics. 
Ooh, they're just putting all the jams. What? Last ride in. Fuck, you're gonna put Last Ride in above Panic Song? <laughs> what? Fuck. <sighs> I love Castaway. I love Castaway a lot, and seeing it so low just hurts me. It physically pains me. Stray Heart. Oh, man. <sighs> what are we gonna do with you, List? What are we gonna do with you? Stray Heart at 117. That song is fucking... It's such a jam. It's such a fucking jam, dude. It's one of the few good songs on Dose. And you're gonna do it dirty like that? If this song ever gets pressed on vinyl, didn't... I thought it was pressed on early... Pressings of Trey. Because that and Drama Queen were originally switched. But I don't know. I could be wrong. Too Dumb to Die... I can get why people don't like that song. I think it's kind of cute. Stab you in the heart. Fuck you. <laughs> That's just fuck time all over again. It's not that good. Make out party. Nah. 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 <laughs> get out of here, bruh. That song's trash. Make out party is so fucking trash. Bouncing off the wall. Fuck. I would have that so much higher. Okay, bruh. Sex, drugs, and violence. Okay. Okay. You're going to put the obvious filler bullshit above bouncing off the walls. Bouncing off the... I'm sorry. Bouncing off the wall. Singular. Fucking... Oh, but respect for sugar, coal, and... Sa uh, whatever. I don't care. Fuck you. You're an idiot. Okay. Yeah, Sex, Drugs, and Violence is such a disgusting filler track. Not, like, disgusting as it's, oh, it's so bad, but come on. Th this song has no merit. It has no w weight. There's no weight to it. It's so, like, rudimentary. It's embarrassing, especially for a band that's been around this long. All the time, mm, the sixth trilogy ends here. I, I prefer a lot of these songs more than uh, it seems the writer of this list does. Because All the Time is a really great track. I guess it's got to go somewhere. Well, also Control, that would be a lot lower on my list. That, not even, no. Nah. Private Ale, it's one of the more forgettable songs on Kerplunk. Jackass, at 108, ugh. Oh, shut the fuck up. Whoa, that 70s show. <laughs> You're hilarious. Yeah, Jackass is great song. Great song. Hashinka. I, I, at this point, I'm not even going to fucking read what the comments they are. I'm kind of a little bit distraught. Because Hashinka is such an underrated song. So underrated. Jinx, I would probably put that a lot lower. That one just feels like one of the more filler tracks on Nimrod. Like, I've listened to Nimrod thick and through for, fuck, for almost 15 plus years now. Because I got into Green Day at around 2004, 2005. And uh, Nimrod was one of the first albums that I've listened to them, or listened to by them. So, th with all that knowledge in tow... I still barely remember how Jinx goes at all. Like, for the longest time, I thought Trey wrote it. I don't know why. Probably because the inner booklet has a picture of him with it, but I didn't think of that when fucking All the Time or whichever one had Mike on it. I... Uh... Tightwad Hill. I would kind of put that lower on my list. It's actually one of my least favorite songs on Insomniac. <laughs> Make it wrong. Father of All, no, that, I wouldn't put anything on Father of All above anything on Insomniac, even though I'm not a big fan of Tightwad Hill, Father of All doesn't hold a candle to it, Forever Now, fuck, Forever Now is 
such a good song. It's a similar situation as Dirty Rotten Bastards, where it's like, I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to make another Jesus of Suburbia, suburbia situation, but... I mean, it works so much better with Forever Now, and I, I love that it ends on a reprise of Somewhere Now. It, it just wraps up the album in this nice sheen, and then you get Ordinary World after that, like the cherry on top. And whew, Forever Now is a really, a really good song. I would have it so much higher up. Baby Eyes. I, I'm a dirty sucker for Baby Eyes. I would, um, I would have that higher on my list. That would be top 100, yeah. Prosthetic head, that would be so much higher on my list. Didn't crack the hundred? Really? Okay. <laughs> okay. Fashion victim? Yeah, I can kind of. Ooh. Oh, 99? Okay, we're gonna get to 99 momentarily. I get why Fashion Victim is so low. I. It's not a song I gravitate to for the most part on Warning, but there's a few songs on that album that I would rank significantly lower. I don't know. Fashion Victim. It's one of those songs I don't hate, I don't love. Not one of the worst songs on the album. It's it's fun, it's jaunty, it's got some nice movement to it. I get it. I like it. But I don't hate it. I don't love it. I don't care. Yeah, Outlaws at 99. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. You pissed me off once again. Outlaws at 99. At least it's in the top 100. I can't get too mad at that. They they had some decency to put a slam jam of a tune in the top 100. And for that, I thank them. But fuck, man. Really? That's one of the best songs on that fucking album. And I, I will vouch for Revolution Radio more than most people. I think it's underrated as all fucking hell. Especially tracks like Outlaws. I don't know how you can listen to Outlaws and be like, uh... So it's okay. That song is great. I don't want. I, I don't want to hear it. But yeah, this uh, this video, thanks to OBS, uh, it's telling me that this is at about twenty seven minutes. So I've been recording for twenty seven minutes straight. Can you believe that nonsense? I think I'm gonna cut it here, uh, and then I'll pick back up almost immediately after and go through the remaining ninety nine, ninety eight. Yeah, eh, save space on my laptop and save you some time. I'm sure you don't want to sit through an hour-long video. So, I'm uh, Sigrev2. Let me know what you thought of this list so far. If you love it, if you hate it, if you think I'm overreacting. I don't think I'm overreacting. Fuck you. I might be overreacting a little bit. But yeah, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. It's great to be back. Hopefully I could do more videos like this and the uh, OBS camera whatever format because yeah. <laughs> making those ranking videos is some horse shit yes once again let me know how you feel and uh, I will see you all momentarily when I finish this fucking behemoth of a list I'm Sigrev2 don't be a stranger